The first thing I need to do is uh, talk about uh, uh, Dr. Hall. Uh, uh, John Hall has been our uh, guest. He's the author of A New Breed. Uh, he is an anesthesiologist in, uh, in Texas. Uh, he, he's fairly esteemed in, in the medical profession. He went through an extraordinary experience, which he documents in A New Breed. Uh, I have a link to that on the site. And it just gives a personal experience. And, and really what he's doing in this book is what we all need to be doing. Anyone who is stalked or targeted in any way needs to be documenting all of these things. So he documented it in a book. And I have something to say about that when, when, when we get them on. And then Dr. Robert Duncan uh, holds uh, degrees from Harvard and Dartmouth uh, and many other uh, universities. His expertise is directed energy, neurological weapons, psychological information warfare, um, he, his movie is called The Enemy Within Psychic Warfare. And, and um, I, I haven't seen this book, but he has another book called Hacking the Human Mind, I believe. Uh, he is able to discuss uh, directed energy, neurological weapons. Um, he's done work in the medical profession, the medical field, and, and actually really use of electronics in a positive way in keeping doctors out of harm's way so they can treat people that are, that are wounded in the field. But, I mean, just a really fascinating uh, – he knows all about MK Ultra uh, when it began, the, the whole history of this. I guess he's kind of the go-to guy when you want to understand the uh, electronic um, warfare aspect of all this. Now, let me see who I've got on the air. Uh, if all goes well, I'll have both of our guests here, Dr. John Hall and Dr. Robert Duncan. Are you there, both of you? Hello. Uh, yes, Dr. Robert Duncan's here. Okay. Well, well, nice to, to hear you. I've just heard a lot of interviews with you, and, uh, and we don't have Dr. John Hall there. Is that correct? So I guess uh, let, let's see if we can uh, go ahead and fix that. I'm going to have to call him uh, live again. I thought we had him on the, uh, on the phone. So let me just go ahead and <laughs> this is what happens. So WWCR, this is what happens. When you're putting out this kind of information, this is very popular among uh, Clear Channel. That's why I'm on Clear Channel right now. Okay, it looks like he's calling in, and I'm going to add to conference. Hello, uh, are you there? Yeah, hey, Jeff, how's it going? Oh, Dr. John. Okay, Dr. John yeah. Hall, Dr. Robert Duncan. Okay, these are the two heavyweights in this. This the most horrifying topic of all time. You know, electronic harassment, mind control, and to start off with, uh, a lot of people have heard you. I've heard your interview with uh, uh, Alex Ansari on, uh, you know, um, Coast to Coast on, uh, I'll just start with you, uh, Dr. Robert Duncan. Um, a lot of people know where all this came from, Operation Paperclip, the Nazis, the, you know, the, the kind of technological background. But so much is going on today, and um, I've heard a lot of your stuff from a couple of years ago, but now that we've had the Jared Lee Loeffner case, and I just want to ask you about this just right off the bat. I mean, is that potentially uh, a programmed uh, guy? Oh, <clears throat> absolutely. Uh, I, I, it's surprising that he even mentioned mind control in his, uh, in his blurb on YouTube. But uh, he very much fits the profile of a programmed assassin. And he was easily discredited in the news, as we saw, as someone who was crazy. Uh, and that will sort of explain away uh, what he did. And the motives behind it, his, his individual motives are going to be different from his controller's or handler's motives. And we can only surmise that... Maybe they want to take away more power gun rights from the citizens. Well, what do you have? You have more crazy people using guns to, to uh, commit horrific crimes. You, you don't know what the political agenda might be, but he's certainly somebody who should be looked at closely as uh, being programmed. He talks about uh, neuro-linguistic programming, which is a form of brainwashing. Um, and, and programming an assassin. And uh, in the old days, uh, uh, Dr. Ewan Cameron, when he was conducting experiments for the CIA, he uh, used two-track loops uh, of really negative messaging while the patient was uh, undergoing electroshock and sleep therapy uh, and being given high doses of drugs. Uh, and he, he would... Uh, you know, try to program a person through 
uh, this what's called neuro linguistic programming. The army uses it mm-hmm. uh, as well, um, and it's a field of study. You can study at M- MIT, and it's how to control the mind through uh, repetitive statements. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That it's uh, absolutely uh, you know horrifying to have seen that, but I mean, we we all knew that you know this guy. If you follow his history, he he hadn't been really violent. He'd been weird. He'd been an oddball. He'd been definitely someone you could target as somebody weak or um, you know that that would be able to do killing for somebody you know, or it could be just an, we don't know the motives. But I mean, obviously. You, you, of all the people in a population, you, he would stick out as somebody to mess with if you were in the business of controlling people. Uh, absolutely. And that's uh, one commonality that you can find. Uh, we did about 650 interviews of uh, targeted people. And uh, one commonality uh, is that they're usually easily discredited in public. Um, and they're, they stick out as an oddball of some sort. Uh, and so, yeah, he would, he would be an easy target. Yeah. For and, them. and, and, and then you got to wonder the motive and, you know, the, the federal judge is shot. Um, but then, you know, other people can be targeted who are not a, an oddball. Dr. John Hall, enter please. And here you are, you were targeted and, uh, you're, you, you know, and there's nothing that, I don't think uh, anything about you that would just signal a flag. Oh, come get this guy. He's easy or he's, he's manipulatable. Let's, let's try it on him. Well, not until I joined this fight anyway. Uh, you know, <laughs> once you, once you start making noise about this technology and joining and, and combating this, and certainly to some extent you're looked at as an oddball for believing it for one. Right. And especially in medical circles as a physician, you know, the, you know, the take in the medical community right now is that, you know, you shouldn't be, you know, counseling these people as to being victims, but should be referring them to a psychiatrist for a diagnosis. And that's the, pretty much the pervasive thinking throughout most of the medical community. There's slowly more physicians coming around to see that there's a, there's a problem and it's not necessarily mental illness now. But uh, I do agree with uh, Dr. Duncan and that most of the people that you see being victimized by this are already social outliers. Uh, there are already people that are uh, maybe somewhat involved in the drug counterculture, uh, or, or have other other factors in their lives that that discredit them already before they ever mention a word about electronic harassment. Okay, but it, you know, a, a case in point is your book, A New Breed. Now, I interviewed you right it, when it came out, pretty much, and at that time there were just a few reviews on it, but you could tell like there there were people that were really relieved that you wrote the book. Okay, for one. I, for one, was in that category. But then there's others there that would just give you, like, one star and call you and, you know, basically try to defame you. You know, defamation, very big with these people. Defame you right on that Amazon site. And now I notice that because you hung in there, it's gone the other way, where you have a lot of really positive comments now. The public seems to be accepting your book. Well, you know, um, in my situation, it was actually my fiancé who was really more the victim. Okay. Uh, and we did it, and we did identify the perpetrators in her case, and a, a lot of those first reviews uh, were actually traced back to some of the perpetrators themselves uh, that definitely wanted the book discredited and wanted me discredited, and went to some great lengths to try to accomplish that, and uh, luckily uh, did not. But uh, you know, and the one good thing about Robert Duncan coming out with his book, uh, Soul Catcher Volume Two, mm-hmm. you know, my book, I go over the, the te- we're we're pretty much of the same mind on how the technology works. My book was more just a, a story from a, a credible person that yes, this is going on. You know, his book goes into detail on how it's done uh, and is, has really been a, a godsend for the victim community. I, I'm kind of playing catch up here with everything. I need to get that book ASAP. Dr. Duncan, did you get uh, uh, harassed for writing that book? Uh, no, I actually haven't. Uh, it's been <laughs> very positive feedback. Uh, Get that it, it almost seems like more public a person is, uh, more they uh, will, you know, stand back because they don't want it to be too obvious. Uh, but, but I haven't had any problems uh, with the publication. And in your introduction, you said it was called Hacking the Human Mind. It, the title actually changed. Okay. It's called Project Soul Catcher. 
secrets of cyber and cybernetic warfare revealed. And the, the reason that I called it uh, cybernetics and the, the field uh, in psychophysics or neuropsychology um, in, in cybernetics comes from a Greek word meaning the art of steering. Cybernetics is about having a goal and taking action to achieve that goal. Knowing whether you have reached the goal requires feedback, a concept that comes from cybernetics. And that in, evolved into the Latin word for governor. And uh, cybernetics as a process operating in nature has been around for a long time, but uh, in society, uh, We've heard it used first by Plato to refer to government. In modern times, the term cybernetics, there was a book written by uh, um, Mr. Wiener uh, called The Cybernetics in 1948, a year after the formation of the CIA. Mm -hmm. His uh, subtitle is important because it connects our control systems with communication. And <clears throat> that... Uh, and he also points out in 1948 that, uh, that both artificial systems and biological systems can have purpose. And this was a scary concept back then. So that, that's the idea behind cybernetic. Cyber has to do with uh, cyber warfare techniques, hacking computers. Now, there's a kernel, and, uh, and you can still find this paper in the military literature of the Air Force, uh, that the mind has no firewall. Uh, and so the idea is uh, that hacking into computer systems and hacking into human beings, individual minds or society's minds, the collective conscious, uh, use the same techniques and trickery. So the book tries to cover all of those and get into details of some of the systems uh, that are currently out there. The, the first stalker that, uh, that, 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 that where I became aware of, of the stalking was through the Scientologists. They seem it, to be you know, experts at that, and, and they're really into this whole cybernetics thing and the mind and manipulation of the mind as well. Uh, they are, and, and it's, I, I tried to investigate them a little more thoroughly and did a sort of a comparative religion analysis of my own. Uh, but for some reason, in all the literature, the word CIA and Scientology seem to be used together. And so I don't... <laughs> yeah. I don't okay, know. I got you. They, well, I'm just aware of... What I, what I mean by that is that the whole gaslighting techniques, you know, that were, uh, you know, like Stasi techniques, uh, mm -hmm. have been employed by the Scientologists. And, and um, I, I'll share an incident later. We have a question uh, coming from the uh, chat room, is this type of programming or mind control, in this type of programming or mind control, can, can they uh, overcome inhibitions uh, in people, or is there some type of pre-programming or pre-screening required for it to work? I, I'm not sure I understand the question. You mean, yeah. you mean can, you, can they use this to, so you overcome your inhibitions uh, uh, against your will? I think that would be a better question. Okay, and, and that's the general question of, of hypnosis. Now, this is uh, one of the CIA's most famous programs uh, that was leaked during the Frank Church investigations in Congress was uh, a remote hypnotic inner cerebral control. So it's a, uh, a weapon of, of detrimental hypnosis. And... If you talk to some experts, they say under hypnosis, you cannot be forced to do anything that's against your very primitive programming, uh, your morality, your ethics. But obviously, they've gone past that. Uh, the whole point of some of the CIA programs were to create split personality assassins so that they can commit a crime or commit their or finish their mission and uh, then be able to pass a polygraph, but they didn't do it. Uh, so, uh, yes, they can make you, uh, can 